Grains are weird. Grains and powders act like liquids most of the time. They fill the shape of their container, you can pour them, and they even flow slightly. But grains do something that liquids don't do. Watch what happens when I stick this knife in this rice here. It holds it in. This is just normal rice and a normal kitchen knife, and you can move the rice around like normal, but suddenly when I try to remove it, it picks up the whole container. The reason this happens is because of something called force chains, and it's the reason why grain silos can be taller than water tanks. Let me show you what I mean. So I'm only gonna be measuring the force on the bottom of this container. This is fully movable like a piston here. So I'm gonna support the edges, but not the bottom. So I have the walls of it supported by this base that's off the scale. Okay, so first I'm gonna do this with water. Now it's gonna leak out a little bit, but I wanna measure how much force I get on the bottom plate. So 100, let's do 200 grams right here. And there's about 200 grams of water. So this means virtually all the weight of the water was pushing down on the bottom plate as expected. But now let's see what happens with rice. So we've got about 150 grams here. Now let's unhook it. And when I put just the rice directly on the scale, we get 253 grams. So that means for this container, the bottom of it only had to support 150 grams, whereas the walls were supporting 100 grams. With the liquid, if I measure the force on the bottom of the container, I will measure the full force of the liquid on the bottom plate. But if I do the same thing with rice, I get less weight than the rice actually weighs. This is called the Janssen effect. Once the force gets to a certain point on the bottom, it can't increase anymore. Even if I had this 100 meters tall, I would eventually not be able to measure any increase in weight on the bottom plate as I added more rice. So where did the extra weight go? Well, it got transferred to the walls. The walls carry some of the weight of the rice, and the further you get from the bottom, the more weight they carry. This happens because of force chains. When there are a large number of particles like grains, they only contact each other at certain points. So if you put a force on one grain, it doesn't just transfer that force directly downward, but it transfers it kind of skewed depending on where they're touching. Like if I contact these two spheres off center, it will push to the side instead of all downward. So the force spreads out like a tree, and eventually the grains get pushed up into the wall. And what happens when you push something tightly into a wall? It can't fall. Like if I push this book against the wall, it doesn't fall down because the sliding frictional force is greater than the downward force of gravity. So this is what's happening with the grains. They get pushed up against the walls, so their full weight is transmitted to the walls, almost as if they were glued to the wall. That's why the knife can carry the whole weight of the rice container, because the weight gets transferred to the vertical knife, just like it does to the walls. Look at this, I can even hold it sideways. Watch, I can even pour it out. <laughs> that is so weird. This is also the reason why when you vacuum bag grains, they become hard as a rock. Because the air sucked out and the outside pressure squeezes the grains together. And suddenly they're jammed into force chains that press each other against the bag's walls. And once those chains lock in place, the grains can't move and the whole bag behaves like a solid block instead of a loose pile of particles. This makes for some crazy effects in grain silos. For example, if you somehow get stuck in grain, it's very hard, if not impossible, to pull yourself out. You get locked into place. Also, sometimes there can be even huge air gaps and bridges that form in grains if it drains out of the bottom, due to these force chains making bridges that completely support the weight of the grains above. But when they break, you can fall in and be covered with grain. So many people have died this way. But there's a way to make grains act like liquids instead of making these force chains. You just have to make it so that there are more contact points. Let me show you. But before we do that, if you like watching my channel, then you probably love doing your own experiments as well. That's why I want to tell you about our sponsor, Mel. 
One of the best ways to learn something is by doing it yourself, and their science kits can bring that experience right into your home. Mel Science Kits are a subscription box that's delivered monthly, and they have a bunch of different options available. Chemistry kits, physics kits, and even kits designed just for kids. This is their Spectrum Physics Kit, where you can easily see additive color mixing. And this one is the Magnetic Levitation Kit. Mel Science Boxes are my favorite kits because they have so many unique kits that give you everything you need to do the experiment. They also make great gifts, especially because it's a subscription box, so it's the gift that keeps giving throughout the year. I use Mel Science Kits all the time at home, especially with my kids. So if you want to check them out, you can click the link in my description and use the code JAMES70 for a 70% discount for the first month. And thanks again to Mel Science for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to our experiment. So if we want to change the contact points of these grains, then we have to keep them moving. So if I place a steel ball on top of this rice, it just sits there. But if I vibrate the rice, then it falls down as if the rice were a liquid. And likewise, if I push a styrofoam ball down in the rice, it stays buried until I vibrate the rice and then it floats to the top. So the rice starts acting like a liquid if I continually mess up the force chains. This is the reason why buildings can sink, bridges can collapse, and entire hillsides can slide during liquefaction. A pile of grains can seem rock solid in one moment, and then with just a little vibration, it turns into something that flows like water. It's one of the strangest and most important transitions in physics. It shows how the hidden world of force chains can decide whether structures stay together or fall apart. And thanks for watching another episode of the Action Lab. I hope you learned something. If you haven't subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.